Well, there's one major question that is hanging over the economy, and it has some economists puzzled. How can growth be so weak at the same time the labor market is so strong? Steve Leisman takes a look at this latest economic puzzle. When it comes to the economy these days, we have a split decision. In one corner, weak growth. In the other, strong jobs and investors, economists, and the Fed struggling to figure out which will be the winner. At 255,000 jobs in the month of July, job growth weighs in well above average. At just 1%, though, economic growth is a full-fledged weakling, a whole point below average. Economists, though, are betting on jobs. The question is, what can we measure better, the number of people working or the entire U.S. economy on a quarterly basis? I think that your money's got to be on, on the labor market being the right signal. One way to deal with the split is to call a tie. So the GDP was one. The employment number probably suggests something like three. The truth's in the middle. We're growing, too. What's it mean for stocks? More jobs and less growth suggest companies might be less profitable, but consumers richer. And that could be okay for equities. That's not going to give us double-digit stock market, but it can give us, you know, 4 to 6 percent, a couple points for dividends, 6 to 8 over the next five years or so. That'd be fine. What does it mean for the Fed? If the reason for the split decision is one of the data points is wrong, it could mean a policy mistake. The Fed might stay too low while inflation and the economy heat up. But the Fed is more worried about weak growth than strong jobs. They're going to be a little confused, and confusion breeds caution. Uh, and I think we've already seen that, and UBS expects we're going to continue to see it. So we're expecting the first rate hike in December. By then, the Fed should have a better idea if strong jobs knock out weaker growth. For Nightly Business Report, I'm Steve Leisman.